In part one of this series, we covered how to set up YNAB. In part two, we talked a little bit about just the basics of budgeting. And now in part three, we're ready to really jump into the logistics of budgeting with YNAB on an ongoing basis. The key to using YNAB successfully is to remember that the purpose of YNAB is not to restrict or to limit you, but simply to assign all of your current and incoming dollars to specific tasks. So it's really about just being intentional with your spending. The best way to show you how to budget in YNAB is to just go through an example. So we're going to continue with um, what we have started in the previous parts. This is an example budget. It's not my own budget, but I believe it's a pretty typical um, situation. I prefer to complete my budgeting on a weekly basis. So every Wednesday I sit down and update my budget. There are two main functions that I achieve with this weekly budgeting session. The first one is to determine where my money went during the past week. So basically tracking my expenses. And the second is to plan where I want my money to go in the future. These are the steps I take each week to keep my budget up to date and running smoothly. The first step I take each week is to record my actual expenses. So it is possible to manually enter all your transactions in YNAB, and some people choose to do so. But my preference is to link my YNAB account to all of my bank and credit card accounts. And then I can just quickly import all my expenses. I usually go through this process one account at a time. So um, generally you'd have a cash account as well on here, and then you'd go through checking, savings, and then your credit card accounts one at a time, and balance them to the balance that you're bank is actually showing online. So let's go through, we'll look at the credit card account first. We can add a transaction and we're going to say it's January 1st and we're going to pay this to the bank and this is going to be the mortgage or rent. We'll say it's a mortgage. The outflow here um, that we have previously budgeted in the last part is $16.50 and we'll hit save. So again, if it was linked and that had already occurred, we could have just imported it there. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. To show an example of a split transaction, I'm going to go ahead and put um, groceries in here. So we type in the pay, and then under the category, you just hit split multiple categories. And we'll say that's to the grocery store. Part of it was for groceries. And then part of it was for clothing, so you needed to buy some socks or something. First you want to put in the total balance, so we'll just make up a balance there and then write which part was for groceries and it'll give you the remaining amount on this, the bottom here, so then we can make sure that we are balanced and just hit save. So it's as easy as that. I want to show real quick how you import transactions. So if we go to this Amazon card, we'll see that there's two new transactions to import here on the top. You can just click that button and then you'll see that there are two purchases, both from Amazon.com. And in this case, the category is filled out. And if you're brand new to YNAB, this will be blank and it will prompt you to assign it to a category. You can see I've entered the remaining transactions here. The next thing I would do is to check them against my bank account balance online and then clear them on the right hand side here. If I import transactions like I did with the credit card, it will automatically clear them because it is coming directly from the bank information. If you have pending transactions, that's the ones you will want to enter manually so that your budget is up to date. So we'll assume maybe there's a pending transaction for gas show you what that looks like and it's for $25. I can look up here I can see um, the cleared balance according to the bank is $120.58 and then I have some pending charges and I can see what my real balance is. This is obviously the one that I'm going to want to make decisions off of. So of course if your balances don't match you have a problem. Um, I found that the most likely thing is an expense was duplicated or it was completely missed. So this can be really frustrating, which is why I do my budget every single week to stay on top of this. And then when it's when I do find a mistake, it's a lot easier to find with just a week's worth of transactions. 
When I'm going through my transactions, one other thing I like to do is to flag my transactions that relate to my taxes. So for example, the child care provider, that is, um, there's a child tax credit, so I could flag that one. Maybe we want our taxes to be green. And then we, I could go through all the green flagged transactions and pull out all my, my information related to taxes. The second step is to record your income that you've received. So realistically, you'd probably just enter your income while you're entering the other transactions. I just wanted to break it out to um, clarify exactly how that's done. So if we go to Add Transaction, we're going to say this paycheck was received on January 13th from your employer. Um, and then under the category, it would be Inflow to be Budgeted. And then you mark that as an inflow. We're going to say it's 2875 to simplify, and then if we go over to the budget, we can see that's included in funds for January. So since January was the first month that we set this budget up, it's not only going to be the paycheck, it'll also be all the beginning balances of the accounts. This is the correct way of using YNAB I've shown you. Um, I, did, I have mentioned on my blog that I actually don't do it this way. I actually budget my income. Um, with my other budgeted expenses, but if you're just starting out on YNAB, and especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck or close to it, I definitely don't re recommend using that way. So that's the correct way to budget for inflows in YNAB. The third step is to budget back down to zero. If you look at the top here, you can see that we have 2875 to be budgeted, which matches the paycheck that was just received. So the next step would be to go through the budget and mark everything that you will need to pay before the next paycheck as well as if once you get started it's really important to start including sufficient amounts in non-regular expense categories so that would be things like auto repairs home repairs medical expenses things that you know or hope rather that you won't be paying before the next paycheck but that it's really important to set aside funds for it's a good idea to include half of your um, regular monthly payments with each paycheck if you're getting paid twice a month. So for example, with the mortgage, we would add on $825 so that we have half the mortgage available by the time it's, it's time to pay the mortgage. And we would do the same um, eventually with the utilities, cell phones, that type of expense. In the next step, number four, we should take a really um, good look at our budget and see where we're at for the month. Um, this is the step of moving money around when we need it. So if we go through, we can look at the budget just line by line and make sure that what we have available really makes sense um, like for the end of the month. So one example that I use is I always look at my grocery budget. And if I have, it's halfway through the month and I've already spent like three quarters of my grocery budget, I add a little bit to the, the grocery balance um, because I'm trying not to set myself up for failure. So that goes with a lot of budget categories. Um, you can really easily move money around. For example, we have this negative balance here. You'll remember maybe this was from our, the Amazon credit card account. We have this negative 3598 balance, we actually had not budgeted anything for household supplies. So we'll assume that something broke or something like that. And so um, this in this example, they needed to, to replace some items. We can go down to the travel vacation fund and we can move 3598. And we'll move that to the household supplies just hit OK and it's as easy as that. So you'll see also um, something that I mentioned multiple times I know but that I love about YNAB is that it really makes you move things often from like your savings or categories that are a little bit more fun to cover your expenses if you overspend. So just to summarize this step, um, I would go through each and every line item and just make sure that each one makes sense. And then if not, you just move some money around and move on with your budget. The last thing I do is I think about my financial goals and I determine what needs to change, if anything, from my budget um, so that I can meet those goals. 
Goals can also be set in YNAB. I believe we talked about if you click on a category such as like the emergency fund and create a goal on the right hand side. So if you do have some of those goals set up, you can go through and take a look and see how you're doing with your goal or set new ones. So I do try and look at my goals, at least um, some of the, the short term goals every single week so that I can kind of keep a long term perspective and um, not just feel like I'm budgeting just for the, the tediousness of trying to track my expenses or limit myself or anything like that. I'm just, it's all about meeting my financial goals. Moving on to the monthly budgeting tasks. At the end of each month, and again, I generally do this on Wednesdays, I'll finalize my monthly budget. Um, the first thing that I do is I make sure that I have all transactions entered for each of my accounts, just as with the weekly budgeting. So I complete that first. Um, in this example, I've entered a full month's worth of transactions. The next thing I do is I go back to the budget and I go line by line through each and every budget item and determine whether the available balance is sufficient for the next um, month before the next paycheck arrives. And also I just I move money around as we discussed before. So if the ending budget balance is less than zero, we'll go down here to an example. In this example, we overspent a little bit on clothing. So what we need to do is we need to increase the budget amount for that category, at least to the amount that was actually spent. So we'll go ahead and we'll put in 121.14. Of course, another way to do this is to move money from another account, but I'm not quite sure where I want to move it from. So I'm just going to go ahead and manually enter it in. And then we'll do the same with books and subscriptions. So we can go through through each and every account and um, kind of pick out those things. I'm not going to do that right now because that's super boring, but we'll go ahead and we'll just move some money around here. We'll, we'll say that we don't, we're not going to spend anything else on miscellaneous. And the last little bit we'll have to take from travel and vacation to even out our budget for the month. So we would do this a little bit more detailed, obviously, um, but you should go through each and every single account and determine whether this available balance is sufficient. So of course it's really important that at the end of the month you check this balance to be budgeted again and ensure that that, budget, that to be budgeted balance is zero. As a quick note, YNAB does not carry forward negative balances here in the available balance. If you'd like a quick summary of my weekly and monthly budgeting tasks, you can go to my blog www.makingyourmoneymatter.com and I have a printable you can use to go through your budgeting each week and each month. While this may seem like a lot of work, within just a couple of months of using YNAB, you'll have your own system down and it will go a lot quicker. You just need to make sure that you work on it on a regular basis. Like I said, I suggest working on it every single week. And I'm willing to bet that if you do use YNAB and you stick with it and learn the ropes, that you are likely to have more saved than you ever have before. The next part in this YNAB series will cover how to calculate your net worth in YNAB, including setting up and using tracking accounts.